right. Hi. Good morning. But it could be evening when you're watching this. Um, so uh, today I, I want to give you guys a, a, a lesson on uh, how to make a card game in Python. Now I know some of you uh, are already working on that. Some of you are already working on creating the game War. Um, and But I thought for, uh, for those that would like to see um, how I would approach it, um, I would show you how I would make an UNO card game um, and how I go through that whole pro process from the beginning to end. Okay. Um, now, whenever you're approaching a bigger project like this, uh, this is where creating a top-down design is really important. Um, this, this is a bigger assignment, bigger project, and uh, it, you're, you're going to run into some issues if you start trying to code it right away. Uh, and so what you want to do is first think about what are the components, what are the pieces to your game, to your project that you, uh, you know that it needs to behave in certain ways and that will help direct what functions you need, uh, what data structures you need, etc. Okay, um, so to do that top-down design, um, we're going to start with um, making that in uh, draw.io. Okay. Um, so if you're not familiar with this, this is um, a web-based uh, chart, flowchart maker, but you can also use it for a top-down design, which I'm making, which I made here. Um, notice this isn't a flowchart. A flowchart uh, shows you the flow of your program from beginning through to the end, whereas a top-down design starts off with our big idea, so the big overall um, function program, which is our UNO card game, and from there, um, it, it it breaks off into all of the different um, components, the different pieces. So from there, what does the UNO card game have to be able to do? We have to be able to build a deck, okay? Whatever that looks like. Now that's going to be a list, and we're gonna we're gonna make it with a list of strings. Although it doesn't have to. There's other ways you can do that. Um, but for this, I'm going to make a list of strings. Uh, we need to be able to shuffle our deck. We need to be able to deal out cards um, to players. And this is, I'm, I'm, we want it to be able to deal out a specific number of cards um, to each player. Uh, that way, we can use that same function to deal two, deal four, or the initial um, five or six cards at the beginning. And then, um, we want to be able to view our cards, our hand, the hand of cards that each uh, player has. Uh, we need to be able to keep track of which, which player's turn it is, um, what the current value of the card on the discard pile is, because then that's what will dictate what uh, cards players are allowed to play. And then playing a card is going to have a whole bunch of other steps to it. And this is where top-down design is really useful because then we can have a function that gets broken down into smaller pieces. So for playing a card, um, they need to be able to choose what card they play. We need to be able to validate that it's a card that's allowed to be played because we know an Uno has to match the color or the number. It could be either or, right? Um, but we need to be able to validate that it's allowed. Uh, and then we want to apply the card effects. There's a number of cards that have effects like a skip a turn, reverse, or pick up two or pick up four, right? Or a wild, changing the color. Um, and then, you know, you can, you know, it might mean dealing more cards, skipping a turn, reversing the order, etc. Okay? So, um, we're going to start by just building out these two functions here, a build deck function and a shuffle deck function. Okay, so uh, I'm going to switch into VS Code now. And um, th this is where the top down design is really useful. Build deck was a was a block there, that's going to be a function. So without even thinking, I'm going to uh, build, make a function called build deck. And I know that at the end, whatever it does, I'm going to return um, a list, a string, a list of strings. Um, whenever you're doing this as well, um, you should always have a comment beforehand. 
um, to, to describe what it does. All right, so this is going to generate um, the Uno deck of, I believe it's 108 cards, parameters, none, uh, return values, um, deck, which is a list. Okay. And so with every function, I should see some kind of comment like this, a, a short description of what it does, what parameters, and this should include the name of the variables, the, uh, the parameters, and the data type of those parameters, and return values, name of the variable, and the data type of that. Now, uh, for this, we need to be familiar with uh, what cards we need, and, and you making a function to generate these um, means that we need to look for patterns. What are, what's the repeating pattern in our deck? Um, so I'm just going to look up the UNO rules here. Um, here we go. So we've got 108 cards. We've got red, green, or blue colors. And we've got one zero card, two ones, and two of every other number. Uh, to draw two cards, two skip cards, two reverse cards, four wilds, and four wild draw fours. So we want to have our function um, generate all of those for us. Okay, so um, first of all, let's get those colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a list of each of those colors. One thing you definitely should not be doing is manually typing the value of each one of those cards. You definitely do not want to be doing that. Um, but what I would, what I would like to have as an example card is, um, you know, something like seven red, you know, or eight green, uh, those kind of things. All right. You could also flip it around. Um, and maybe, maybe we do want to have that like a red, red seven, green eight. And that way we could have like a blue skip stuff like that. Maybe I'll do that. I'll do a color first and then the number. Okay. Um, so now that I've got the colors, now I want to make another list of all of our values. And we've got zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, there's no 10, but there are draw twos, uh, skips and reverse. Okay. So draw two, skip, reverse. Now, because this is Python, it doesn't matter. We can have a mix of uh, strings and integers in our list, which is nice. Uh, if you're doing this in a different language, that would be a problem, like Java. Um, here we go. So now, I'm going to use those two lists and I'm going to use a nested for loop to be able to generate our deck. Okay. So I'm going to go for color in colors and inside there for value in values. Now this is going to iterate first through each color and for each color, it's going to iterate over each value. And so the, it's going to start off with a red zero, then red one, two, three, four, and it will go through each one of these value will be equal to a zero first, and then it will be one and two and three all the way to, re to reverse. And that whole iteration color will be the value of red. Once it finishes that, then it will increase color to be the next one, green, and then it will start values all over again, and value will be zero. 
one, two, three, four, five, etc. Um, and so I'm going to make a new variable card val, and I'm going to make this equal to color, or actually maybe I'll do it this way. Space that dot format um, color and value. Okay, now that I've created that card val, now I want to append it to our deck, which I haven't created yet. So we want to create an empty list, and now I'm going to append it, deck.append, which means to add to the end. And there we go. Now, so far, let's just see what we've got there. And we don't have anything. <laughs> Why is that? Because I haven't called my function. Silly me. There we go. And you can see we've got a fair bit of cards now. Red all the way down to blue from the number zero up to nine. And then um, we've got draw two, sk red skip, etc. Uh, but remember, all of them except for zero we wanted two of them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have if a value is not equal to zero, then I'm just going to append card val to the deck again. That way we've got two of everything except for our zeros. As you can see, there's still only one zero, but two of everything else. Now, the other thing that we're missing is our wilds. So um, I'm gonna make a new list of our wilds. And what do we have? We've got four wilds and four wild draw fours. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in here just um, the unique values because again we can use a for loop to put multiple copies of each of those in there and so we need four of each of those and so after that after that whole for loop is done because we don't need to have it inside of the the color the wild don't have any color um, now I can do another for loop but this one I'm going to do I in range four deck dot append wilds zero deck dot append wilds one now what does that do notice i'm not even referring to i in here and you don't necessarily have to all i'm doing is i'm using this for loop to repeat the the commands that are inside it four times so I've got deck.append wilds zero. So I'm appending the value at index zero of wilds into deck. And that would be wild. Every list starts at index one. And then I'm appending wilds at index one into deck. Every starts at index zero. Did I say one? Zero. Every list starts with index zero. So wild is index zero, wild draw four is index one. So I'm appending those two, then it loops and it does this whole th those two commands four times. So now let's see what we've got for our build deck. Now at the end we've got wild, wild draw four, wild, wild draw four, etc. We've got four of them. It doesn't matter that they're not you know one after another. We want to shuffle this deck anyways. And now we're returning the deck, which means um, I don't actually want to print it inside of that function anymore. Instead. I'm going to make a new variable uno deck equal to build deck. When we return a value, that means wherever we call that function, it gets replaced by the return value. So here, there we go. Okay. Now we've finished our build deck function. Let's move on to our shuffle deck function. Shuffles a list 
of items passed into it. So I'm going to make this function where I have to I have to pass in a list and then it's going to shuffle the order of it and then spit it out. Now some of you might be thinking, well, why don't you just use the Python built-in shuffle function? And we can do that, but for uh, I, I want my students to learn how to create an algorithm that sh that randomizes the order. And so um, so we're going to do that. We're going to make our own custom shuffling function. Okay. All right. And I'm going to call it shuffle deck and I'm going to pass deck into it. So now we have to think, well, how do we want to shuffle the order of our deck, of all the items in our deck? And so, um, you know, you could try to simulate how we normally shuffle decks. You could, you know, we could split it in half and then alternate on the bottom of our deck, the bottom card of each of each half of those decks. It's almost like you're flipping the cards like that. Um, or we could um, do random cuts and just do a whole bunch of cuts partway at random locations of our deck. There's lots of different options. Um, the option I'm going to go for uh, involves using a random number but all I'm going to do is for each card in our in our deck, I'm going to pick another random card somewhere else in our deck and swap those values. If we do that for every single card, find another random one and swap the positions, swap the values, uh, when, by the time we get to the end, it should be pretty well shuffled. Okay. Now to do this, we're going to use a for loop similar to what we did before, except instead of using card in deck, uh, we're going to do uh, something else. All right, I'm going to use, um, I'll, I'll use card POS in range and the length of deck. Okay, now here's the difference. When I did it the other way, card in deck, that means card will be the value of each item in the deck. But we don't want that. We need, we're concerned with the position because that way we can refer to the different positions and change their values. Okay. Uh, so for card position in range length of deck, so that means it's going to start, card POS is going to start at the value of zero and then it's going to iterate through all the way up to, but not include, the length of the deck. So it sh should not actually equal 108. So for each one, I want to generate a new random number now. And so I'm going to go rand POS is equal to random dot rand int from zero to now this is where even though there's 108 cards, the index number of the last one is actually 107 one less. And so we want to make sure that we're generating a random number from zero to 107. In order to use random, we're going to have to go to the top of our code and make sure that we import random. If you don't, you can't refer to that method. Okay. Now we've got that, that variable. We've got a new random number. Now we want to swap the values. And in Python, it's really easy. We can just go deck, put in the index number of the one card, comma, deck, index number of the other card. And make that equal to deck rand pos comma deck card position. So this is a way we can swap values of items in a list by using the um, the way Python allows us to assign multiple variables new values in the same line. So here we're saying this value, the value at that position, and that the value of that position in our deck is go now going to be the value of deck ran pose, which will be given, put in that position there. And the value that's currently there will be put in rand POS. Okay. At the end of that for loop, it will have gone through the whole deck and swapped every single card with a random position. So all we're left to do is return deck. 
So now let's uh, make Uno deck equal to the return value of shuffle deck, but we want to pass in Uno deck. Now be careful. You might look at this and go, well, I've got the variable deck here, so I should put deck here. But remember, deck is actually a local variable assigned to whatever value you pass into this function. It doesn't actually be, it doesn't have to be defined outside. And even if there is a variable that's named deck outside of the function, it's not the same as this one. Okay. This is called an argument where we pass an argument in. This is a parameter. It's a local variable. Um, it only defined within this function. What we're concerned with here is passing in a list. All right. Cause that's what it needs. Okay. For all that matter, we could replace this with uh, a list of just numbers and that would work just fine. It just means that whatever list we pass in inside the function, it will be assigned the variable name deck and then it's going to do all these commands with it. Okay. So I'm going to put uno deck there and finally let's print uno deck and let's see if we are effectively shuffled and you can see that looks pretty well shuffled. They've all mostly gone into different orders, different places. If you don't like, if you feel like it's not shuffled enough, we could all always do it again. And then it would shuffle twice. Okay. And that's how we build a deck and shuffle a deck. Next time we'll move on to starting to deal out cards and making our play a card function. Thanks a lot. See you later.